Yo, what's up, dogs? I went and saw The Marvels on November 9th, 7 p.m., opening night, and I got an IMAX ticket. I bought it online. It looked like there was about 30 people when I did that, and I navigated that UI so I could get buffer seats and stuff like that. And I did. I got there. When I got there, it was like 50 people. You know, I got the concessions. I had the buffer seats, and I was locked in, ready to watch this movie. And I just wanted to point something out. And I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, or maybe it's just me. But like, do you remember when we used to go to a Marvel movie and it used to be played in like three screens and it was like on the hour, every hour, you could try to get into seeing one of these movies and the theaters were just packed with cars and people and it was an energy about this movie or the, the movie itself that you're going to see. Remember those days? Because when I went to see this movie to, that week, I drove in and like, it was felt empty. Like I got a parking spot, no problem. There wasn't a lot of cars there. The cars that were there were probably gonna go and see the Marvel movie. And like the energy inside the theater, it wasn't there like it is for normal Marvel movies. Remember when we used to buy the cups, the collector cups? With the little pongs on top and stuff, those little plastic doodads. And we're like, yeah, this is great. I love all this. Mm, give me all this merch. Remember when we used to do that? Because like, I didn't, I just didn't even care. And it just felt like no one actually cared. And it just made me go, huh, that's interesting. That, it just, the buzz and the eventness of this movie felt so lackluster. It was just weird. I'm so used to going to Marvel movies where it feels like an event. And the last couple of Marvel movies have not felt like that. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that, or maybe it's just me, but I don't know. So I just wanted to bring that up as an observation because I just thought it was weird when I pulled up into the theater. I'm like, man, really? No one's, something's happening. It's not just Marvel movies. Well, maybe it is, maybe it is. I don't know, it's just weird. It's just, I don't know, it's just weird. The movie experience is just weird lately, but We'll dive into some more of that, maybe. We'll see. I, I feel like I need to write a big video essay about this because I have some thoughts and I kind of want to express them because I'm concerned. <laughs> Anyways, I got notes and I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of, guys, guys, let me just talk to you for a second. Be honest with you. I watched this movie. I did not fall asleep during this movie. I watched it all the way through. No problems. But I'll be honest with you. I misremember what I watched and it just feels like this movie did not stick with me like and I mean like the movie there's elements of this movie that have that definitely have stuck with me where I'm like I remember that but like the big story plots the villain the uh, the why the reasons like those did not stick with me and I think I'm like I'm like that's a concern that this movie is that forgettable you know i only saw it what i think this is it's uh, november 19th i'm recording this so that was only 10 days ago and my brain is already like deleted we don't need that film but i'm thinking about all other films that i've seen this year weird it's just weird i don't know if that happens to you guys but it's definitely happening to me but i wrote some notes down this might be a quick review <sighs> i feel like i wish i had a wall here just so i can lean on it and be like guys the marvels man <laughs> Something's not clicking. So, let's start off with the, the basics, okay? This is a PG-13 movie. You know what you get with that. And its runtime is an hour and 45 minutes. I think this movie should have been an hour 30. This movie is... Guys, oh, guys. This movie is poorly edited. And I don't even know if you could take 15 minutes out of this film... Re like you could take 15 minutes out of it. You could make this movie a tight 130 for sure. Yeah, there's scenes in here that you could take out for sure to make this a tight 130 for sure. Now that I think about it. But like, it's a hot mess. It's, this would be a hard movie to re-edit because it's just all over the place. This movie's all over the place. Anyways, we'll get to it. The budget is, from what I found, um, a lot of the reports are saying $270 million dollars. Um, I've heard otherwise, like more like 300 million, 350 million. But what I found was Forbes, they reported 270. So that's what I'm going to sit with, 270. I could be wrong. The internet could be wrong. But that's what the research was showing me. 
So for the box office side of things, um, as of right now, so it's been 10 days out in the wild, um, it's made a domestic uh, take of $65 million and an international take of $62 million, bringing that to $127 million worldwide, which I know to most the Marvel standard, that is not a good number. I understand that and I agree with that because this should be 500 million or more, right? Like that's where it should be trajectory wise, should be going that way. And I have a bad feeling this movie will probably make it to 250 million, if that, like, and that's kicking and screaming. I don't think it's gonna hit 350, I don't think so. But 250, it might be able to do that. It all depends on what kicks it out of IMAX, right? Which I think is Napoleon, which is this week, Thursday. So it has a little bit of time to make some more money, but after as soon as Napoleon comes into play, I think we're not. I mean, it might not even make 200. Maybe okay. I'm still sticking with 250, but we'll see. We'll see. I got, I feel like I need to make a video, a follow-up video of just like how did these movies end up doing after their run? Maybe let me think about that because I am interested in this marketing stuff. It's really interesting to me. So. Here are the, the review scores so far, right? So we got the Rotten Tomatoes critic score is at 62% and the audience score is at a high 83%. That's interesting to me. The uh, Metacritic is at uh, 50 out of 100 for the critic. And the user uh, score on this one is at 3.7, which is interesting. That's an interesting number. It's very low compared to the uh, Rotten Tomato score. And the cinema score in general is a B. And my letterbox score, it, I'm at like a, one and a half to a two. I actually took a minute just to like look back at my other Marvel movie ratings on Letterboxd. And I, uh, I've i been at twos for all of them. Like all the most recent ones though. So uh, Quantumanium is a two. And oh, I gave Guardians of the Galaxy a three. So this one's at a one and a half to a two. And uh, I think I might stick at a one and a half right now. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes when I talk about this film some more. Um, so before we get into the movie... I was kind of sitting there, when I was watching the movie, I was like, if you haven't watched everything, and, and I mean everything, like I actually haven't watched most of the Disney Plus stuff. I didn't finish Miss Marvel because I just forgot about it. I don't really want to come back every week. I'm more of a binge watcher. So I started watching it and then I forgot about it and I didn't go back to binge it, you know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't watch, uh, what is it, Secret Invi Invasion? Didn't even get around to that one. And I did watch all of WandaVision. That, that's part of the homework, I would assume. And I was also thinking, like, do you need to have a recap of Captain Marvel? Like, rewatch that movie from 2019 to kind of be caught up to date? It's been four years since we've seen Captain Marvel in anything, really, right? So, and uh, again, I don't know what happened to Miss Marvel. She might have shown up in there. I still have to get around to watching it. And on that note about Miss Marvel, I actually did like a lot of the stylistic choices in Miss Marvel at the beginning. Uh, this is a totally different video. Anyway, anyway, there's, there's some artistic things that they did in that movie, or sorry, that series uh, that I really, really enjoyed. And I hoped that they would bring that style over into the movie. And they actually did. And I was kind of happy about that because when they introduced Miss Marvel to us as a theater goer and who has not seen this stuff, I was like, oh, are they going to use that style from her sh series and bring it into the movie? And they did, and I was happy about that. So, you know, you get a half a star for that thought. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into this. So that's the homework I think you might need to watch. So I didn't watch all this stuff. And so my point of view is I didn't watch all that stuff except for WandaVision. And I did see Captain Marvel, but I haven't watched anything else. And so I kind of know what's going on, maybe. So that's where my bar is at with this film. Let's try and watch this together, and here we go, okay? So, the director is Nia DaCosta. Um, I haven't seen anything she's made, and she did make the most recent remake of the Candyman movie from uh, 2021, and I did want to watch that film, but I just totally forgot about it. So, I haven't seen anything by her before, so this is my directorial debut for me to, uh, to see how she does. And uh, yeah, it's a movie. So, it's a movie. So, okay, let's get into the story here. Like, direction-wise, uh, the, uh, there's nothing cool to look at in this movie 
from a directing point of view, okay? There's nothing cool in this that's framed out neat. There's no cool blocking. There's no cool camera movements. There's no cool, like even the cinematography side of things, which is its own thing in itself. Uh, nothing looks cool in this film. Everything looks incredibly boring and drab. And where they do have color, it's not cool. The cool factor of this film is very not there. Like, it's an okay experience. It has its moments where you will laugh. There is a couple moments in this film where you genuinely will laugh. But, like, overall direction, I'm like, what is this? This is just set simple shots. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to set the camera up and give you this angle. Hey, what's up? And we're going to give you this angle. Yo, what's up? And then we're going to give you the wide. Hey, we're all three of us are here. And that's it. And then maybe we'll do an even bigger wide so we can get four of us. Right? Like, nothing magical. No one's moving, interacting cool, and doing stuff. It's, it's not cool. But it's a movie. I'm trying not to roast, but I'm also trying to just point out, like, hey, you're not going to see anything amazing here. And that's upsetting. Because, like, I go to a movie to be entertained. When I go and watch these movies, I don't go into them with a pre-notion of hating a film. I don't think like that at all. I give you my money. I want to be entertained. And I pay for these things. I'm not getting no uh, press passes or anything like that. I take my... I go to work all day. You know, get my shift, I get my paycheck, and at the end of the every two weeks, or I go every week to a film, I want to go see a movie, I go and I, I give you my money, I want to be entertained. And that's my whole point of view. And so this movie did not do that. It does, sprinkles it, but it doesn't hit it. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, so we start off this movie, if I remember, with the villain. Yes. We start off the movie with the villain, uh, who, who is Dar Ben, who is played by Zawe Ashton. And this villain is boring, is the best way for me to point this villain out. Because this villain does not seem special. Um, she doesn't seem cool. She doesn't, like, nothing about her seems threatening. And she's on this quest to find these, uh, hold on, I wrote it down, the Quantum Bands. And these bands are these bracelets that fit on your forearms. And if when she gets one, she's trying to find two. So she's on this mission, which we don't see the mission. We see the end of the mission, where she find where her crew finds the last one. And she, or sorry, not the last one. She they find the tomb or crypt or obelisk that is that has the bangles encased inside it. When she opens it up, she has a big hammer from, uh, I, it looks like Rohan the Destroyer's hammer from Guardians of the Galaxy 1, but I guess it's not his hammer. I don't know why she has this hammer, but does everyone in that clan have that hammer? Is it a signal of leadership, that hammer? Like, I don't understand why she has his hammer at all. Anyways, I also don't understand why it emits purple energy. But I do not remember if his hammer did that in Guardians of the One, Galaxy 1. Because I haven't watched that movie in a decade probably. So anyways, anyways, anyways. She finds, she rips open the thing. She finds the bangle. And she's like, there's only one. There's supposed to be two. And her like minion, I forget his name, was like, oh, well, we found one. We don't know where the other one is. And she's like, well, we must find the other one. But like, I'm cool that I have this one, you know. And she puts it on. And she like rips open uh, a jump portal or a portal. And because it rips open, it stays open. Like the tear doesn't close back up. Like you see other jump portals in the, in the Marvel Universe where they open up, jump through, and it will close back up. But with this bangle, it rips it open. And I guess because she doesn't have two of them, she can't close them properly. So it's causing these tears in technically the fabric of space-time. So when these rifts are created, it causes like a blip in, I don't know how uh, Captain Marvel and or Nick Fury, uh, their computers register an anomaly. I don't know how they track these anomalies in space, but they're like, hey, there's a weird energy surge that just happened. 
And we're also introduced to uh, Maria Rambo at this time too, right? Oh, sorry, Monica Rambo, who's played by Tiana Paris. And she's out there doing stuff on the space station. And she also notices like this weird rift thing. Like this rift thing happens, right? And so she is like, I'm gonna go see what this weird anomaly is that's over here. I don't know why there's a weird anomaly right near the spaceship because the anomaly happens on a moon somewhere else. But for some real weird, weird reason, there's a, an anomaly near the spaceship that causes um, Maria to go and check it, take a look at it, right? Why do I keep calling her Maria? That's her mom's name. It's Monica. Monica goes and checks it out. And so when she, she's working her way to check it out, and then we have uh, Captain Marvel who's just chilling in space in her ship doing nothing cool. She's just there with Goose having a tea. And uh, Nick, Nick Fury calls her up and is like, hey, can you go check out this weird anomaly? She's like, yeah, I'm on it. And she flies off. So she goes to see the anomaly where Darben created the first terror. She's seeing that one. Photon, I want to call her Photon now. Uh, Monica goes and sees the other one. And then we cut to uh, New Jersey, right? Which we're now introduced to Iman Valani as Kamala Khan, a.k.a. Miss Marvel. And we get introduced to her and... We are kind of just getting reintroduced to her or introduced to her for your first time if you've never seen Miss Marvel. Now, the weird thing is we don't actually really know much about Monica either if you haven't watched WandaVision. So we don't actually get a cool introduction to her at all. Actually, that's the thing that sucks about this movie. Each character that they introduce or reintroduce, like Captain Marvel, is not doing anything cool. Like, she could have been doing something cool, like, just something cool, like, fighting something, showing off her powers. But no, she's just sitting on a ship, moping around. Then we get introduced to Monica, who's doing some light-bending stuff outside on a spaceship. Nothing cool. But she could have been doing something cool, something a superhero would do. And then we get introduced to Miss Marvel, and her intro is probably the coolest out of all of them, because it's, like, this very high-energy... Uh, introduction to a teenager who's infatuated or hero worships Miss Marvel. Now the question that has to come up is, well why would you worship Miss Marvel who does not even come to Earth? Like I don't even think she showed up on any like she hasn't been on Earth since the 90s. Right? And then she came back for I can't remember if she came to Earth on end Endgame or not, but she came to help fight Thanos, but I don't think Earth like, I don't think she's been to Earth in like 30 years. So why could, how, how could you be a fan of a superhero that's actually not a superhero of Earth when she's a superhero of the universe? But like, is Earth reporting on Captain Marvel's exploits? And we don't know this? But why is Captain Marvel not just hanging out on Earth as Earth's defender? But like, how can Miss Marvel be a fan of that if we don't see her in the media all the time? So I had questions. Anyways, we learn about... Miss Marvel, she has a bangle on, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, it's like, what happened? Is like Miss Marvel, no, sorry, Captain Marvel touches this like uh, energy thing that's happening, and she touches it, and Photon touches the one that's in her space, and when they touch it, all of a sudden, all their powers like become entangled. So it's Photon. Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel are all energy combined somehow. So the, the somehow from this energy, which I don't think is ever actually explained, they are now sharing powers. So whenever someone uses their power, they swap places with someone. So if I'm over here and you're over here and you go, blah, 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 I pop here and you pop over here. And now I'm like get my butt kicked. So that's how that's supposed to work. And it rotates between the three of them. And now the concept of this power, it is a cool idea. However, if you've been playing video games for as long as I have, then you know that this system has to be really tight, right? Like they're trying to introduce kind of like Marvel versus Capcom 2 tag system right you know what i'm saying and that's what came to my mind like right away i was like oh that's neat they're going to do like a tag system that could be used interestingly it's not ever 
used interesting. And it's kind of broken because like if you think about a video game, when I use a power to swap a person, it's instant and it's no matter what the ability is. So anytime I use my power, I'm gonna get the new character. But in this movie, we see multiple fight sequences with the three of them. And sometimes when someone uses a power, the power will actually flip the character or tag them in and out. And the rules, and I gotta get down to this again, the rules are not explained to us, uh, if not clear enough, as to how does this work in this world. And you are introducing a concept which is cool. Like, I can't say that's not a cool idea, but I need to know the rules. I need to see like flawless execution of these rules or then I start to question everything. And when I start questioning things, my brain is no longer engaged with the movie and it's starting to go, huh, how does that work? And this is a problem with this film because every time they start engaging in conflict and use their abilities, their tag system doesn't work correctly and you start going, wait a minute, is that her power or not? And then you start questioning the powers and abilities of these characters. Because as many times when Miss Marvel started using, like she made these discs and stuff, and, um, and she's jumping on them, and I'm like, isn't that her power? And then there's a moment where I see her, like her arms stretch out and grab something. I'm like, isn't that her power? So what is her power that causes her to switch with Photon and or Miss Marvel? I mean, sorry, Captain Marvel. And how does this work? And this, it goes for all these characters. Because, like, I don't even understand Photon's power in this entire thing. So I'm just like, okay, so what does Photon do? She can phase through light, uh, light objects. She can absorb light. She can sort of fly. And she can use light as a weapon, as a beam energy weapon, I think. I think that's her, like, four things she can do. So, for instance, some dude came down with a spike break down on her and she phased through the spike which means she used her power to get through the spike which means she should have been tagged into miss marvel and or captain marvel who would have had a spike through her right so it doesn't make sense sure the shot looks cool but the rules of the the rules of engagement in the combat situation it doesn't work so you screwed up and then you're starting to make me question what are the rules? Anyways, 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 anyways. I'm going off on a tangent. I went on a rare a rant. I care about rules and it matters in movies too. Like I don't, it just matters. It really does and it takes you out of it if you start sitting there and questioning what the hell is going on here? So, where am I? So yeah, she, okay, so they entangled their powers. Then they start to figure out, well, what's the goal of Darben? And Darben wants to rejuvenate the life on her planet. I think the planet's called Halas. And she wants to do that by destroying everything Captain Marvel loves or holds dear to her because Captain Marvel destroyed her planet by killing the AI robot thing and that just devastated the planet's sun, water, and or, uh, atmosphere in general, okay? So that's Darban's like motivation to all of this. So the first thing Darben does is she goes to this new planet where the scrolls, like a scroll kingdom is like finally inhabited and she's like, hey, I'm gonna take the atmosphere and she does. And uh, this is when the first time the, maybe the second time the Marvels, I'm just gonna call them the Marvels, um, used their abilities in combat, but things didn't go that great, but still they were able to evacuate. Majority of the people were able to live and get off that planet. That was a kind of a sticking point for Miss Marvel. She's like, I just wanna save people. And she's, she's cool in this movie to a degree because she has this like rose colored glasses thing, right? Where she's like, being a superhero is everything that she's always wanted to be, but she's seeing that certain consequences come with these, and responsibilities come with these powers, kind of like Spider-Man. And she is kind of like not understanding how to deal with it. There's a lot of cool things they could have done with these characters 
with these scenarios, but I feel like it's really wasted. The emotional side of things in this movie is completely wasted and missed, like big whiffs. And there should be more uh, emotional stakes for Kamala, aka Miss Marvel, because what she's this is her first time being a hero, right? As far as I'm concerned. And because I haven't seen the TV series, but this is her first time doing real hero shit. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of just like water hitting a duck's back. You know what I'm saying? She's just like, oh, people are dying. I can deal with it. Whatevs, you know, and there should be more emotional toll going on here. And there's like, like there's also another emotional element to this movie between Captain Marvel and uh, Monica Rambo. Yeah. Because Monica Rambeau and Captain Marvel have this relationship where Captain Marvel left her when she was like 10 and said she'd be back and she'll be back, but she has never came back to see her. So there's this like emotional, um, familiar family thing that really doesn't ever happen or hit or land or get like, it's another big whiff. And like when they finally do see each other for the first time, it's kind of like very unemotional. Like it's just like, hey, what's up? Oh, cool. I, I said I'd be back. I was busy fighting aliens. Like it's so dumb. And there's like no, there's no heart in this. Oh man, this film might be, this film might have no heart. It wants to have a heart. It wants it. It wants it, but it doesn't have it. And it whiffs on these emotional elements in this movie there's two like man yeah they whiffed on it this movie could have been way better way way better anyways 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 so they lose the darban there and then they're like oh now they need water like this whole thing is silly they need air water and fire which is the sun so then they're like okay now we th we figure where, where's a planet that has a lot of water and they could go to like Od Odlandia or something like that some weird planet that's full of water and it turns out that Captain Marvel is married to um, Prince Yon who's played by uh, Su Young Park and when they get there it's just it's just so random when she's like oh yeah I had to marry him it was for political reasons and you're like what political reasons why would Earth need any political reasons with this these people like. Isn't, doesn't she represent Earth? I don't know, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know. So, on this planet, they sing. They don't talk. So they have to sing the song. And it becomes a musical. And this is where I say, remember when I said this movie could be an hour and 30 minutes? This is where I'd be cutting. Lots of cuts. Right here. We do not need this part. It, it was silly. Sure, we need a water planet. Fine. Let's do that. But let's take out this 15 minutes of bull and just be like, hey, yo, Prince Yon, what up? I'm back. Your princess is here. We got a problem, right? I don't know. I don't know. It's just, I don't know, man. So Darban opens a portal and shows up, starts sucking all the water out. And you know what? They do not explain how the Bengals, like, because she's opening these rifts. It does not explain how these rifts have suction ability to suck atmosphere. So when they took the first planet, they wanted the atmosphere, the air and stuff like that, which is not how that works, I think, scientifically. It's like, don't you need some trees and stuff? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Anyways, that, that rift is sucking out their atmosphere and putting it into her planet's atmosphere. It doesn't explain how the power works like that. So then they have a second, oh, now another portal on this planet that's sucking up all the water and putting the water on to her planet. And then again, Captain Marvel and crew, they lose that fight because they, they're not a team. They're not using their powers properly, right? It's dumb. Anyways, so they lose that fight. And uh, ben Har Bendar, Darben, Bender. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. What is her name again? Oh yeah, it is Darben. So anyways, Darben escapes, you know, dastardly gets away. And she's like, well, what are they going to take next? And then it's like, oh, she's going to go after Earth's son. Because, you know, Carol loves the Earth. Does she though? Does she? I don't know. Um, anyways, so yeah, she opens a portal up on Earth. But let's, let's, okay. And then she starts sucking the sun 
Uh, she doesn't open a portal on Earth, sorry. She opens a portal beside Earth's sun. And she starts taking the Earth's energy and magma, I mean, sorry, the sun's energy and magma gets sucked into the portal thing. And I don't know. It doesn't how it actually doesn't happen, I think, because they have a fight there. But before we get to that fight, let me just take a minute to a subplot, which is Nick Cage, um, Nick Fury, sorry. I'm going to go see a Nick Cage movie soon. That's why he's on my brain. Um, so Nick Fury is on his spaceship. Um, what is it? Saber? Yeah, I think it's Saber. And like Kamala Khan's family is there, and there's a bunch of people that work on the space station there. And it's like this weird subplot of Goose. And it turns out that like Goose is having babies, and it's these little eggs that are planted around the spaceship, and no one knows what they are. And then eventually, the um, eggs all hatch into these tiny little kittens that are like baby gooses. And if you guys know who Goose is, Goose is the orange cat that can shoot at the octopus tentacles and eat things and people. And sometimes he'll spit them back up or he digests them, I guess. We don't really know the rules of him, but... He does spit things up quite a bit in this movie. So, and he did that in the uh, Miss Marvel. I'm sorry, Captain Marvel, right? He spit out the Tesseract. So, it's those rules have been established. Anyways, so the ship's under attack, or something's happening, or it's getting blown up because of the rifts and stuff like that. So everyone has to escape, right? And they have no more escape pods, and there's like 500 people, and they're like, hey, well. Let's just have the cats eat us, all the kittens, and then they could spit us out on Earth. Now, I have to say, that was this, this is the funniest thing in the whole freaking movie. Because I, I laughed. I genuinely laughed. I'm also a person who loves cats, so I might be biased. But I laughed. I laughed. The people around me laughed. We were having a good time at this point in time because we needed to laugh. So, I have questions. Like, we're almost done this review. I have questions. I have more questions than answers. And one of the, th like, okay, why does Dar Ben actually need both bangles, right? Why does she need them? Like, she's already capable of opening these rifts that are pretty freaking powerful to suck all this stuff out of the planets and stuff. Why does she need both of them? It doesn't actually, she never really, I don't really remember the explanation or ever think we were told the explanation of why she needs both because... Having both would mean that these rifts would be stable. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that's the thing, and they just didn't explain it to us, that she could still use this, these, these, these bangles or whatever um, to open rifts, but because she doesn't have both, they're unstable, and that's what's causing all this chaos. That would make logical sense to me. However, she goes out the whole movie without them, really, and the cool thing about the bangle is it absorbs um, their energies, the energies that are entangled. So like when Miss uh, Captain Marvel like shoots something at her, she can absorb it and she gets more powerful from it and can like re-release the, the energy off of it. Kind of cool. They don't use it enough, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of weird. <sighs> I don't know. It's kind of cool. It's like, a, you know, just an okay video game mechanic, right? When you really sit there and think about it. You're just like, oh, don't hit her in the bangle. And everyone hits her in the bangle. She doesn't use that hammer that much, though. Like, there's only one or two times she uses the hammer. It would have been cool if she powered up the bangle. And then she could turn, take that bangle energy and put it into the hammer. And, like, really mess some people up with that hammer. That would have been cool. And, like, yeah, that would have been cool. I'd be down with that. But it doesn't work like that at all, ever in this movie. Um, where are we? Oh, yeah, the end. Hold on. Let me just double check my notes. But we're at the end. We're definitely at the end. So the final fight is very anticlimactic. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so the final fight is very, very anticlimactic. So what happens is um, they, they beat each other up for, you know, five or ten minutes. And then I forget how Darben gets the other bangle, but she is able to get both of them. And then she, like, clangs them together like Wonder Woman. And she increases her powers, like her abilities, just like she becomes like just insanely cool, like overpowered. I mean, not cool at all. This character is never cool once in this movie, um, period. She starts overpowering and I think she just obliterates into dust and the bangles fall on the ground or something. No, no, I'm wrong. I forgot. She shoots the powers out 
and creates a giant rift in space time again, like a big, big tear in the, in, into it, right? And then she withers away into dust. And now Kamala has both bangles, I think. I can't remember. So Photon is like, hey, that rift over there that she just tore open, it goes to a different dimension. Don't ask me how Photon knows that's a different dimension. She just says it. And then Miss Marvel, and I mean, sorry, Captain Marvel's like, well, oh, I forgot. There's some dumb stuff in here still. There's still, I forgot. Oh, we'll come back to that. It doesn't matter. So Photon hatches the plan of, you guys combined all of your energies, shoot them into me. I will absorb all that energy and shoot it back into the tear and that will close it up. And Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel are like, cool. So they do that. And then Photon takes all that ability, the powers, and just soaks it up. She becomes like kind of like a nuke. She flies out into the space, into the tear, and she shoots like this webbing, laser webbing out and starts to pull the fabric of the jump points back together. And when she does, Carol's like, no, don't do it. I need you on this side. Like, cause Rambo's on the other side. It's like, no. And um, yeah, so the portal closes up on her and she's stuck on the other side. So Rambo is in a different earth somewhere and she left Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel behind. But I forgot to mention this. There is a scene in this movie where Photon is like, yo, Captain Marvel, why don't you just reboot the sun on Halas? Like, you are strong enough to do that. You can go and recharge it. And she was like, oh, I didn't know I could ever do that. And then she does at the end of the movie. So that was like her final act of like kindness. I don't even think they repaired all the portals. I don't even think they showed us that. I just remember Captain Marvel powering up and flying into Halas' sun. And then the sun starting all over. And like, that was that. And that's the end of the movie. And then, oh God, yeah. So the end of the movie is what? We have a little teaser of uh, Miss Marvel meeting up with Hawk Girl, and she's like, hey girl, will you join my team? So obviously Young Avengers is gonna happen, which I might be interested in. I won't say I'm not interested in right now because like, I, I think, like, Miss Marvel was funny. So maybe her in her own film, like, if she's the star of the film and, like, really leads the Marvels, that, or sorry, the Young Avengers, that could be cool because I just liked her energy. So, like, maybe, like, her film, her energy on the film, that character. So maybe it would be a fun movie. And I think Marvel needs some fun right about now. So that could be maybe cool. We'll see. We'll see if it even gets made, right? Um, and then we have the post credit scene. So spoiler alert. This whole thing's been a spoiler alert. You already know where we're at. I've been talking way too long about this film. So, um, the end is uh, Monica wakes up in the X Mansion with uh, Beast is there, played by Kelsey Grammer, or voiced by Kelsey Grammer. It's a big CGI version of Beast from X-Men 96, the cartoon X-Men, which was great. I loved it. I was, I was so hot, hyped when I saw Beast. I'll be honest, I'm an X-Men guy. So I was like, yes, I like this. And then it turns out that uh, Monica's mom on this planet, Maria, it is Maria Rambo, right? Yeah, Maria Rambo is uh, dressed as binary. And I was like, oh, we're gonna do something with this. So it looked cool. Um, the, that ending looked cool. The guy beside me was hyped for Beast too. So uh, we're hyped for X-Men. There's some X-Men fans still out there. So in general, in general, that's the end of this movie, man. <sighs> yeah, man. Yeah, like, do I think you should go and see this film? Hmm. If you're a Marvel fan, sure. If you're just a casual, don't. Just wait. Wait till it comes on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, like, well, I, I, yeah, just do that. Wait till it comes on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, and then, like, will I buy this film? No. It'll, I don't own any Marvel movies, actually. I, I was kind of surprised by that. Because I was looking to put some films here. As you know, I usually put something here. I got no Marvel movies. So I was going to put Man of Steel there, but I was like, that's a little bit of a slap in the face. We're not, we're not going to do that. Anyways, um, that's the end of the review. I have nothing else to say about this movie at all. Yeah, I, 
I don't. I'm going to go. Uh, the next movie I'm going to see is The Holdovers. And then I think I got like Napoleon. And what else is coming out? There's a lot of good stuff. Thanksgiving. Uh, oh, I, oh, yeah. Hunger Games. So there's some stuff coming out that I'm going to be seeing soon. So stay tuned for all of that. And um, yeah, man. Whatever movies you guys are watching, I hope you're loving them and digging them. I'm out of here. Peace.